Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this Soundbites module, we're going to focus on bedside ultrasound of the gallbladder. I've divided this module up into parts 1, 2, and 3, and in this module, part 1, we're going to focus on the normal hepatobiliary imaging and ultrasound findings. Bedside ultrasound of the gallbladder allows rapid evaluation of patients presenting with acute abdominal pain to the emergency department, and interestingly enough, gallstone-related disease is now more commonly diagnosed in the emergency department with the increased advent of bedside scanning. Gallstone-related disease is not only seen in the traditional female population as described in textbooks, it's also being seen in men with rapid weight loss or weight gain changes, and also in the elderly. So let's begin this module with a review of the anatomy of the right upper quadrant, how to perform the exam, and the ultrasound findings in hepatobiliary imaging. Let's begin with a review for the positions for gallbladder sonography. As shown in probe position 1, the first position that's often used for gallbladder sonography is going to be known as the high lateral view in which we're looking through the ribs. It's best to use a smaller footprint probe for this exam so that we can easily sit the probe between the ribs. We're going to be coming in in a view that's very similar to the right upper quadrant view for the trauma fast exam, however the probe here is angled more anteriorly than for the fast exam to image the gallbladder. The second position is known as the subcostal view, as shown in probe position 2 here, and it's best to roll the patient into the left lateral decubitus position so that the gallbladder is closer to the probe. From the subcostal position, we can push down directly on the gallbladder to elicit the sonographic Murphy's sign. Now, from both of these positions, we should rotate the probe from long axis with the probe marker towards the patient's right shoulder to the short axis configuration with the probe marker over towards the right side to completely inspect through the gallbladder for any pathology. Here's an illustration reviewing the anatomy of the gallbladder and biliary tracts important to bedside sonography. Here we see the gallbladder shaped as a pear-like structure, and we see the parts of the gallbladder, the upper fundus, the intermediate body, and the neck of the gallbladder towards the top of the image. Recall that it's impacted stones at the neck of the gallbladder that often cause symptomatic biliary colic and can lead to acute cholecystitis. We also see the cystic duct draining the bile from the neck of the gallbladder and joining into the hepatic duct which is draining the bile from the liver. The confluence of the cystic duct and hepatic duct forms the common bile duct and stones lodged within this area can cause cholidocolithiasis. We also see the pancreatic duct joining to the common bile duct and dumping into the duodenum at the second part of the duodenum located at the ampulla of Vater. Stones that may lodge here can cause gallstone pancreatitis. Now let's take a look at the ultrasound findings of a normal gallbladder. We see the liver to the left and the gallbladder just inferior to the liver to the right. Notice the areas of the gallbladder. We see the upper fundus towards the upper right part of the image, the body of the gallbladder, the intermediate part, and the neck of the gallbladder all the way down towards the left of the image. As we look closely through this gallbladder, we see that it has the typical darker or anechoic type appearance on bedside sonography, and that's because of the fluid within the gallbladder that is bile. We see here the absence of any significant stones, and remember that gallstones would appear as brighter or hyperechoic foci within the gallbladder lumen. Here's a normal variant known as a septated gallbladder, and we see a little septi, that little white line, going through the middle of the gallbladder. This can be seen on bedside sonography and is not to be mistaken as pathology. Here's an illustration showing the relation of the gallbladder to the portal vein, known as the exclamation dot sign. The exclamation would be made up by the gallbladder and the dot would be the portal vein. We see a thin white line connecting the gallbladder to the portal vein, known as the median lobar fissure of the liver. And this can be a very helpful landmark as one looks to find the gallbladder in relation to the portal vein. Also, we see the common bile duct and hepatic artery on top of the portal vein, making up the structures of the portal triad. Here's an ultrasound image showing the portal vein exclamation dot sign. And we see the gallbladder to the right making the exclamation and the dot, the portal vein, to the left. Notice that the dot, the portal vein, has hyperechoic walls due to the fact that it's bringing greasy blood from the intestine to be filtered by the liver. We see the white line connecting the gallbladder to the portal vein that is the median lobar fissure, and posteriorly we see the inferior vena cava. Here's an ultrasound image showing the median lobar fissure of the liver in greater detail. 
Here we see the gallbladder, the pear-like structure to the right of the image, and the branching portal vein over towards the left. As we look in between the two structures, we see the thin white line known as the median lobar fissure of the liver. Now the MLF can be a very important landmark as we look from the portal vein up to the neck of the gallbladder to inspect the neck of the gallbladder for any small stones that may be lodged there and causing biliary colic. Here's another video clip in which we can see the relation of the portal vein to the gallbladder in explicit detail. Notice the gallbladder to the right, the portal vein, the branching structure with hyperechoic or whiter walls towards the left, and we can see the area of the MLF, the median lobar fissure, connecting the two structures. And again, this is a very important landmark for walking your way up to the neck of the gallbladder to look for any small stones impacted at the neck. Also, looking for the portal vein can be very helpful in looking for a contracted gallbladder that can be difficult to identify on bedside sonography. Now let's review an image showing the anatomy of the portal triad. We see the first structure of the portal triad, the common bile duct marked in green. Notice that it connects the gallbladder down to the duodenum. While it's located to the left of this picture, in a real patient it would be located over towards the patient's right side. We see the posterior structure of the, the portal triad, the portal vein, marked in blue, and we see the hepatic artery, which would be the third structure of the portal triad, over towards the right of this image, but would be located towards the patient's left side on real-time scanning. Here's a video clip showing the sonographic appearance of the portal triad, which we refer to as the Mickey Mouse sign. And here we see the gallbladder over towards the left of the image, and the portal triad making up the Mickey Mouse sign, the portal vein making up Mickey's face, and the ears of Mickey, the common bile duct making up the left ear of Mickey, and the hepatic artery making up Mickey's right ear. And this image is best obtained from a subcostal plane in a transverse axis with the probe marker over towards the patient's right side. Now we can place Doppler sonography onto the Mickey Mouse sign to further delineate the structures and we see that the portal vein making up Mickey's face, the posterior most structure of the portal triad, will actually light up with Doppler sonography. We can also see that Mickey's right ear, the hepatic artery, also has Doppler flow on Doppler sonography. However, the common bile duct, Mickey's left ear, fails to appreciate any Doppler flow due to the sluggish flow within the common bile duct. In this video clip, we can appreciate the common bile duct and portal vein in more of a long axis configuration. We've turned the probe, so now the probe marker is over towards the patient's right shoulder, and we see the gallbladder towards the top of the image, and notice here we see two parallel channels towards the bottom aspect of the image here. Notice the portal vein with Doppler flow, and on top of the portal vein we can appreciate the common bile duct. As the common bile duct enlarges with obstruction, it will become as large or larger than the accompanying portal vein. Normal dimensions for the common bile duct is that it should be no larger than one millimeter for each decade of the patient's life. A common bile duct that measures across in diameter greater than eight millimeters is universally enlarged. And when we measure the common bile duct, we're going to measure from inner wall to inner wall across the lumen of the common bile duct. My conclusion points for this Sound Bites module going over part one of gallbladder sonography. Gallbladder ultrasound at the patient's bedside is a very helpful ultrasound exam in evaluating the patient presenting to the emergency department with acute abdominal pain. And hopefully through the looking at this module, you know how to perform the right upper quadrant ultrasound examination and understand the anatomy of the hepatobiliary tract essential to bedside sonography. And also, by going through the footage, looking at the ultrasound imaging of the gallbladder and portal triad, you now know how to interpret the ultrasound images that you will obtain at the patient's bedside. So I look forward to seeing you back as Sano Access continues, and we go on to future modules focusing on gallstones and acute cholecystitis.